Welcome to Tools in the Shed number 100. That's right. Oh, we have Woo! hit the magic century. Oh, and um, we've got cake. Well. We've got cake. And have an amazing extended length episode for you, including the offer of a money can't buy prize and some that money can buy, uh, as well as the most special of special guests. <laughs> Live. Live. Live mm. on Thanks. air. We've had cake. We've got Ugh. streamers. Ready? We are celebrating 100. Yes. Okay. As usual, we are powered by Cars Guide and ready to rip into the stuff about cars that's caught our eye this week. I'm James. With me is Matt. Hello. Who's been investigating <clears throat> Swedish innovation. Mm. And Richard, oh, who's been hello. assessing fresh metal on display in Germany this week. Mm. And we have the most amazing muskwatch in the history of the show. Live from his villain's lair, which we know is a dormant volcano just outside Fremont, California. Wow. We'll be speaking to the dear leader himself, Elon Musk. Awesome. So stay with us. Mm. First of all, some feedback. Now, Garth Rudlin on Facebook says, thanks for another entertaining podcast. Fantastic, Garth. Thank you. At Matt Campbell, what yes. was the ANCAP safety rating on the 2007 Jimny you purchased? Just curious. Uh, didn't have one. Uh, okay. and I'm actually <laughs> kind of... Streamer. What do you mean? Is it zero? Or uh, no, no. It was never but, tested, oh, okay. which I'm actually kind of thankful for Good. because I wouldn't want to read so that. So you can imagine it as a maximum five-star car. Yeah, and it's got Brilliant. airbags and ABS, so it's got to be it's safe. It's got to be safe. Right. Yeah. Uh, he also says, I'm surprised Crafty missed the Ute Mega Test, but Crafty was actually there. Yeah, he I mean, didn't probably miss Probably depends on which Ute Mega Test you're talking about. Yeah. Poor Hilux missing the memory component of the test. I think that may be a misspelling. I'm not sure. Does that mean it's due for an update like RAV4 and Camry? or more recently Corolla. Not a... Well, we agreed that Hilux was only updated uh, recently. Two, two years ago. Oh, no, no. Well, the, the all-new model was uh, four, years, four ago, years ago, but the new model, the facelifted model that's out now yep. was about a year ago. But then recently they've added safety equipment, which it didn't have before, including AEB and adaptive cruise and right. auto high beam and lane keep and all that sort of stuff. And it is now... Uh, up there among the best in terms of the safety gear, yeah. uh, which is good and overdue. Well, that's fantastic. Brilliant. So, yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> also says, um, new Supra. Will we see a Lexus version or a Lexus is purely Japanese, as in the whole car is developed, whereas the Supra is a joint venture with BMW, blah, 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 blah. I'd say that's unlikely. Yeah. Um, that, that that would be a Lexus version of that car. Also says, just remember, without Elon, we'd be looking at the Leaf as our only electric future. Not bad for a car company born in 2003, and that is absolutely mm. a fair call. Porsche's been around electric drivetrains for close to two decades and still can't match the range or acceleration of P100D Model S. So that'll remain to be seen. We'll see when the Taycan is actually in back-to-backs. No doubt that will happen oh, yeah. with a Model S. Just a thought, as a family man, I'm more interested in electric Macan. And we know that's pronounced Machan because yes. we've been uh, corrected on oh, that yes. from time to time. Well, there's there's nothing in that space for Porsche just yet. No. But there is plug-in hybrid versions of the KN. Yes. Uh, no full electric, though. Yeah. Mm. That'll come. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Definitely. we'll see. Mm. Gregory Smith, also on Facebook, just says an overpriced Camry. <laughs> for, for what? Now, I presume he's referring to the Supra and isn't just, you know, hankering for an overpriced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you very much for that, Gregory. Hammer rocks on the 100th show, of course. Oh, hammer. Uh, James, hammer. is there an official word yet from Toyota if they'll release a manual A90 uh, Supra? And Tetsuya Tata, who is the father of the whole thing, he mm. was the 86 man, now he's Superman. Mm. Superman. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he has constantly been asked about a manual uh, gearbox because there isn't one mm. just yet. But he's a bit cagey. There will be iterations to come. He wants to be a bit like Porsche with the 911. Yeah. Upgrades, different models, mm. different special models. Mm. So you never know what's down the track. He has admitted previously that there's uh, a prototype that yep. has a manual gearbox in it. So you'd have to say it's a better than 50-50 uh, chance. It'd be hard to think that there wouldn't be. But it's yeah. guesswork. It's guesswork. Okay, SC says, in celebration of podcast F100, you guys should all wear the Cars Guide tights next week, oh, which of course cool. we are. You just um, can't see them. Assuming, yeah. of course, they have already haven't already sold out. No, we've got some of the last pairs in stock. They and do- don't they feel <laughs> Oh, oh look, mine are riding up a bit. <laughs> oh, okay. They're just... Um, I, I wear feel, them like that anyway. You feel very so, confident, yes. I've got to say. <laughs> cool, yeah. um, Ian Thomas says, great podcast as usual, guys. Thank you. Love the quip. Is Elon going? And I think that was about going to Mars. We will get to mm. that when we talk to him. Mm. So that's a very timely, he's timely question. He's waiting on the line back there, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, his people are. So, yeah. 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 
Well, yeah. Looking forward to seeing the Taycan in my local showroom one day. A big show for 100, please, guys. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got a big one. Uh, we've we've got, got a big I've one. Got a massive now, one. Wax Triple what? Three. Wax Triple Three. If Ranger is our top selling ute, how do they manage to produce left hand drive versions quick enough while still managing the production of right hand drive? Are the petrol Rangers made in the USA? Now, as far as I know, Ranger is made in Thailand. Thailand. Mm. Yeah. So there must be some flexibility in that production facility to knock out, you know, left-hand drive, right-hand drive, all of that. Um, and, yeah, it can probably be built into other plants. I think we're talking about F-150, that mm-hmm. the Rouge plant is just pumping out so many F-150s that yeah. it's probably not economic for them to kind of slip in a few right-hand drives exactly. um, at this stage. But, look, you never know. Ford is, is big but flexible, so we'll see. Bit like um, Richard. No, absolutely. Big but flexible. Yeah. Um, Greg Wallace, the Toyota two-seater is the car you buy <laughs> when you can't afford a Porsche. And I'm sure he's talking about Supra. But yeah. look, i got to say GC. That, that, that that Supra at about $90,000 has so much to offer. And actually, the credentials to challenge cars that do cost twice as much yeah. um, as it. So that's just my yeah. opinion, having driven the car. But uh, we'll see. Now... We will move straight on, Richard, Mm. to cars that aren't necessarily being driven, but they're definitely on display in one of the biggest remaining motor shows in the world, and it happens in Germany, in Frankfurt. Fill us in on your your top top arrivals. The largest motor show in Europe, uh, and some fantastic, outstanding cars. And we're talking sort of a lot of brands re-beginning their... Their, their futures yeah. in, in a way oh yeah that sorry got me right in the eye <laughs> okay thank you just continuing the celebration yeah well, it's, it's one of those episodes isn't it um i've got five cars for you i've got five standouts and i've got two not so standouts <laughs> okay They're stand downs or stand-ins or, or yeah. whatever you want to call them size. they're not that great well they um, you know anyway listen to these Vol- <laughs> volkswagen id3 yes now that's got to be probably one of the <laughs> This, this is a turning point for Volkswagen. As yeah. we know, they've been through some tumultuous times with with engines involving diesel fuel. Uh, the ID3 represents the third phase, uh, Volkswagen says, of their, of their life. Uh, the first ah. was the Beetle. Mm-hmm. The second was the Golf. And this is electric. So this is the third phase of Volkswagen. It's built on the new MEB platform. And it's going to be sized between somewhere between the Polo and the Golf. Uh, there's some really really quirky features about this EV, and this is this is a car that's that's already got forty thousand um, orders for it already in in, in Europe. Um, forty thousand people have signed up for it. Wow! Right, um, it's the the cheapest variant. Uh, has a forty five kilowatt battery, uh, a range of about three hundred and thirty kilometres. Uh, there's a middle sized battery which has got a range of about four hundred and twenty, and then there's a long range battery, a seventy seven kilowatt one, which has got a range of five hundred and fifty k's. Wow! Um, and those are real world um, uh, kilometres as well. You're looking at a price of around forty five k when it comes to Australia. We're, we're thinking it's going to come out mid two thousand and twenty in Europe. It might be the following year for for Australia. Um, it, it previews the new design language for Volkswagen. We're yep. not just talking about a new Volkswagen badge. Um, they've redesigned that, um, yep. but the interior is completely redesigned. There are some features which I think some people are going to love, other people aren't. Like, for example, the accelerator pedal, pedal has a play triangle on it, and the brake pedal has a pause symbol. Wow, I see, yeah. I see. I so, it be a stop? But I've got, <laughs> I've got to say... Like a square? Uh, subjective as always, yes. but our very own Chesto knocked out a, a really great little video mm. intro on the car, yep. and yep. we've all seen pictures of it, and they're, they're on Cars Guide uh, website. Um, I think it looks terrific. It does. I really love yeah. the it look of it. Absolutely and does, and that that brings me to the next one. Now we saw this in 2017 at Frankfurt. It was called the Honda Urban EV concept oh. back then, and we went. We went a bit silly in the Everyone office did. when we saw it. Everyone yeah. did in the world. That's right. Now the production ready uh, car has 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 arrived. It's the Honda E, and like the Range Rover Evoque, it's kept um, pretty much um, loyal to its initial concept design. Mm. And there's a couple of things that haven't carried forward, like those wheels which yeah. we saw on the 2017 model. Oh, and they're fantastic. Multi, yeah. multi, multi, multi. And it's spoke, a, a little yeah. bit skinnier. That's and right. A little bit taller, rather than a little bit like a squat. Yeah, little domino. It still has that sort of 1960s, 50s, a fit Bambino side, a sort of yeah. profile. Yeah. Um, a 200 kilometer range. It's a full EV as well. Uh, it arrived 
Well, whether it's going to arrive in Australia, we don't know yet. Honda, Honda Australia is looking at a business case for it, but please bring it. Yeah. It's going to be so good. Um, in Germany, you're looking at around about, well, not around about, they're going to be selling it in Germany for 29,470 euros. Okay. Um, which is... That's expensive. That's 45 expensive. grand, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, but you think about what a Leaf costs, you think about what a Kona Electric costs. It's Yeah, it's around yep. about that range. Right. You know what I love about that car? It's the first one to bring out um, cameras instead of rear vision yes. mirrors on yes. the sides. That's right. So you've got these really sleek looking little sticks which stick out from yep. the side and they've got cameras on them rather than, than, than mirrors. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean... You know, how will that work? Oh, will, will How long have we seen that on <laughs> yeah, concept cars? But also, you know, how quickly would Australian design rules totally. catch up with that? Be oh, like, oh, that's uh, not how we do it let's, here. Yeah, sorry. Let's yeah, start a petition to stop yeah, Australian probably, design yeah. rules being yeah, a thing. Yeah. yeah. But, I, I mean, I was at that Frankfurt show. Yeah. And I must say, despite Merck AMG hypercars oh, and whatever... Yeah. It absolutely stole the show. Yep. And I think it was one of the first Lecky concepts to have the full width screen yeah. like right across the dash, which was also a bit of a showstopper. The interior of that car is amazing. Yep. And um, yeah, well, basically, yeah, preludes what we're going to be seeing in Volkswagens you know, coming up. Now, talking about uh, show yeah, stealers. Hondas. No, Hondas. Sorry, uh, yeah. Honda's come out. Yeah. Now, talking about show stealers, Land Rover Defender uh, yeah. debuted at the 2019 uh, mm. Motor Show. Now, it was, it's, we saw some leaked images beforehand. Uh, they were being very cagey about what was underneath it. We now know it's definitely a monocoque chassis. You know, we were 99% sure of that, but we you know there were rumors going around that it could support maybe a ute. Um, it's got a start price of around seventy thousand dollars. It's due to arrive in Australia in June twenty twenty. It's going to come with a long and short wheelbase, a one ten and ninety. Those numbers don't mean anything anymore. Mm. They used to refer to um, long and wheel, but short wheelbases, but now they're just symbolic. They were the inches. Um, that was the, it. Ninety inch, yeah. hundred and ten inch. That's yeah. it. That's it. Um, there are some amazing specs surrounding uh, the Defender. It's got a two hundred and ninety one millimeter ground clearance. Wow. It's got a 900 a millimeter weighting depth, right? Which is it seems taller <laughs> than the car. Yeah. Um, and it's got some amazing. Got a 38, 28, and 40 degree uh, approach, oh, breakover, yeah. and departure angles as well. Crazy. Again. Yeah. And it's it's all time four wheel drive. Um, it, Land Rover is calling it their most most capable four wheel drive ever. Yeah. And that's wow. a big that's call a big for call, a brand like Land that's Rover. That's a big call. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's that was probably the show stealer, uh, but also stealing a few a few of the headlines was Porsche Taken. Now this is or Taken, uh, this is Porsche's Taycan. <laughs> this is the first ever production um, model of an electric vehicle for Porsche. Yep. Um, new electric platform. There's going to be three variants, but the Taycan Turbo S will have a zero to a hundred time of two point eight seconds. Yes. Oh, it's um, slow. It's slow. Torque one thousand and fifty oh, newton meters. Weak. Power 560 kilowatts, which is because I think to mm. um, the the point we were discussing earlier, a P100D Model S yes. is 2.6. That's right, to 100. Yeah, so yep. yep, a two telling tenths of a second there. Yeah, but yeah. also the first car to be launched with a two-speed transmission that's in right. an electric car. Yeah, pretty amazing, and that's going to do wonders for the efficiency of that engine, well, yeah, that motor. I and say. maybe for top speed as well. Yeah. Well, that's it, because those that don't know it, they're most electric cars have got a single drive. Yeah. And I mean, of course, it can it can rev to, you know, infinity to come, but um, <laughs> a two-speed will, you know, faster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, we can't forget Mercedes-Benz's EQS concept either. Now, it's just a concept car. We don't know what it looks really looks like on the inside, uh, but it does uh, preview uh, Mercedes-Benz's new design language. Now, yep. Gordon Gordon Wagner, uh, the chief designer, chief design officer for Mercedes-Benz, called it, the next level in our design language is so that you don't see lines anymore. It's all sculptural. Um, mm. And it looks... Look, it looks like a computer mouse. So it's a blob. It's a <laughs> no, vi no visible lines. No visible lines. <laughs> So it's invisible. I'm, well, I'm wearing this the is a magic right now. I'm, I'm hoping that that's the case. <laughs> Your anyway. v, v, VPL. VPL. That's oh. right. There's no visible lights. Yeah. Um, okay. That, but mm. he said that before about uh, existing models, like the the current generation or well, newish generation CLA and yeah. A class, CLS. And E class and CLS. Yeah. 
they always say that, you know, you, it, the idea is that you can't see any lines in the car anymore because mm. previously they were very line heavy. Yeah. Like you look at the previous generation A class compared to the new one. That's yeah. right. And it's like, it's like they've gone, oh, we'll just erase that in well, Gordon, Photoshop. Gordon used to love a few lines. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, especially... <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, I, I won't go into that. Yeah. But well, what he what he has done is minimise things, right? So yeah. it, it's a process of reduction. He's yeah, trying right. to take away as much as possible. Right. But he might just Look, be over-egging it a bit. And JC and Matt, as you know, there's only there's only two designs for cars. It's lines and then angles and then curves. Yeah, angles, curves, yeah that's angles, right. Curves. So yeah. we're going back to, to it's curves. It's like the again. real estate yeah. market, seven-year cycle. That's yeah. right. We're in an angles that's uh, it. period. Yeah. Yeah. You watch, no, in no, seven no years' lines. time... Gordon Wagner, we talk, it's all about lines. Yeah, yeah. it's all about lines. <laughs> yeah. uh, 270 kilowatt, um, uh, sorry, 270 uh, kilometer range in this in this proposed EV concept as right. well, um, which is... Poor? Poor. It's low. It's, it's, a big, a, it's, it's an S-class, really. It's an S-class it? shape, so it's yeah. preview, previewing that sort of I would have sort of limousine. thought that they might say 1,270 kilometre yeah, range because right. it's a concept, so you can make it up. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. matter. Exactly. Well, I, it's refreshingly good to see some realistic figures. A bit though. of honesty. Yeah. It's yeah. not as good as my electric car concept. <laughs> <laughs> I've got... Which is in development. Yeah. Now they're not so good. Now I've got okay. two. Okay. I've, got, I've got two. There's, there's, there's a whole lot more, but um, I think we've only got time for two. The BMW Concept 4. Oh, oh yeah. Um, we have seen BMW Kidney Girls getting bigger and bigger over the years. The BMW X7. I tell you what, if you had those kidneys, one. you'd be on dialysis <laughs> yeah, because they be. don't really work. They're bloated. Well. No, they're yeah, bloated. They're, bloated. They're, they're, they're not. They're not in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> quite literally. Well, BMW <laughs> says that it, this this one is a bit of a hat tip to the 1930s 328 coupe, which you can probably see behind us. Mm -hmm. And like, look, I'm telling you, in the 1930s. The grill was the entire, you know, front of the, you know, the car. Right. Um, and this, yes. I think, looks like it's just taking it a little bit too far. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, apparently, it's made up of tiny little fours. If you look closely at that grill, I can't see them. Um, that, that's that's the, the balancing act. Yeah. If I'm not mixing my metaphors, of car design though, isn't it? Yeah. How yeah. far can you stretch the elastic band exactly. before it breaks? You've got to take people on a bit of a journey. Yep. And challenge them somewhat. So... Initial reaction is probably going to be, oh, oh I don't know exactly. whether I like it. We probably need to revisit it yeah. in six to 12 months. Absolutely. And say, how does it sit now, you know? And look, a concept car wouldn't be a concept car if it wasn't a bit outlandish in a lot of ways. Yeah. And look, the, all it's yeah, doing really point, is too. just prepping people or, or, you know, giving a bit of a hint of what the, the, the new shape of the of the upcoming new generation 4 series will yeah. look like. Teach your dog to jump this high, yep. you can jump that high. Make a grill this big yep. and people will cop it a little smaller. Yep. Exactly right. Be. Which so is be. probably one of the reasons why that Honda Urban EV came out so close to what it looked like yeah. because I was seeing what people thought yep. and when we all went bananas over build it, they're like, keep yeah. it, build it, build yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Um, now, one last not so great car to come out of uh, Frankfurt this year. Now, you look, I don't know what you're, you 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 might think about this, but I think the Lamborghini Shan is a bit of a fizzer. Mm, right. um, it's Lamborghini's very first hybrid, um, and look, it combines a V12 with a 48 volt electric motor. <laughs> exactly, um, it's like a lowercase h on the hybrid. <laughs> There's not much yeah. hybrid in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> six, look, it's still impressive. Um, zero, uh, six, 602 kilowatts combined with the electric motor and, and mm -hmm. the V12. It's got the same zero to 100 time. Of 2.8 seconds as oh, the take As the take Yeah. So is mm. it an Aventador successor or it's just a one-off? Oh, I, I, I haven't really looked into it. It's an a special it, edition. They're only ah, making okay. 63 and I they've see. all been sold. Yeah, oh, right. Um, okay. But in, in terms of the look and the styling, to me, it's just another Lamborghini special edition. Yeah, right. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Right uh, look, it's 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 exciting, and I wouldn't knock one back, <laughs> but um, I don't think it moves things forward. Not in the same way than EQS yeah. or even a, even a BMW Concept Four. You you've know? said that in times past, Richard, and you've lived to regret it. <laughs> I wouldn't have. knock it. It's back. exciting, and I wouldn't knock it back. That has it's come to true. bite you on the butt. That's how I lost one of my kidneys. I think. <laughs> <Actually>. <laughs> yeah. mm. Exactly. So 
Five good. Five good. Two, two not with so work, good. work to do. That's yeah. right. Um, and look, we've had a pretty good wrap of, of things on the Frankfurt Show. So if people do want even more detail, they could uh, take a look there. And Matt, we are going to move on to you. Yes. We're staying in Europe in the sense that it's a European brand. Mm-hmm. What's going on with those crazy Swedes at Volvo? Well, I spent a day with the Volvo team, uh, Volvo Australian team, okay. uh, this week yep. and went to the launch of the all new Volvo S60, cool. which uh, is gorgeous. Um, I don't think there's much debate around that. You know, we've, we talk about concept cars and how they can be polarizing, but I don't think there's much debate that. Yep. The, the Volvo design language is mm. amazing. Pretty much spot mm. on. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, are you okay? Sorry, there? I just dethroned, uh, <laughs> decrowned myself. Wow, okay. Um, but yeah, so that's that's great. Um, a mid-sized sedan, uh, luxury car brand, you know, we've seen it all before. Mm. It's happened before. Mm. Um, they're challenging on value and, and price and spec uh, with, a, with a very affordable offering at the entry level point. Um, 55 grand for an all-wheel drive model. You've got to pay 70 to get an all-wheel drive Audi A4. So oh, yeah. that's amazing. That's something. Mm. Um, but the it was not so much the S60 that was the most uh, intriguing point of of the day. It was more about what's coming next for Volvo because, I mean, it's a brand that's uh, on a growth trajectory right mm. now. They're they're beating the odds mm. in the market. Yeah, JC, it's been one of those ones that uh, in Australia has been bucking the kind of downward market trend for new cars and yep. and just growing mm. consistently month after month. Yeah, they're they're actually going really well. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, they they're on track to do eight thousand cars this this year, which wow. will be a record and good for them. I mean, yep. they've they've got the product. We've been saying, uh, you know, amongst ourselves that they've got the product to be selling bigger numbers than they are. Uh, so they deserve the success. Um, one of the things that they maybe were falling short on was ownership promise. Right. Um, so they still haven't upgraded to a five-year warranty. They are talking about doing that. Uh, but no one else in the luxury <coughs> segment is doing that because typically luxury car owners sign up for a three-year lease or something like I that. See. Yeah. And right. so they'll turn it over without holding on to it. But Volvo cars are a little bit different. Their owners are a bit different. Mm. Um, they tend to want to hang on to cars a little longer. Yes. Um, so they are talking about the five-year warranty being part of that luxury segment. And the three-year thing proves quite awkward for BMW with the Z4 Supra uh, comparison. Oh, uh, yeah. You've got, you know, Toyota are offering five years unlimited plus two more yeah. on their service mm. advantage thing. If yep. you have the logbook, BMW, three years unlimited. There it is. Yep, yep, exactly right. And and then there's um, the service costs, which we've been um, pretty honest about. They've been way too high. Yeah. I mean, yep. when, you, when you're paying like... You could get, there were two different levels of uh, servicing you could get. There was Smart Care and Smart Care Plus. And Smart Smarter Care. Smarter Care. Smarter Care. Yeah. Smart Care and Smart Ass Care. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the second version was more comprehensive than the first. Yep. yep. But even the cheapest version mm. for a, uh, S60 in the previous generation was about $2,500 for three years of maintenance cover. Which yeah, it's a lot more. That's a than, lot of money. You'd, yeah. you'd want to pay. I think. Yeah. yeah. So this time around, yeah. uh, with the launch of the S60 and across the entire range, mm. they've gone. We're chopping it back. Mm. We're we're doing a three-year service plan, like you get with uh, Audi. BMW does a slightly longer plan. It's five years and eighty thousand Ks, uh, and Mini as well. But so the Audi version is about the same. It's three years, 45,000 Ks, comprehensive service cover for about 1600 bucks, which mm. is a big move forward for Volvo. And it should be a big difference for customers who have been concerned yeah. about the ownership costs. I mean, I've had people ask me, should I get uh, an XC90? And I've said to them, can you afford six and a half thousand dollars for five years of yeah, service cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Like, right. I mean, the car's 90 grand, sure. But yeah. if you roll it into the finance, it's less of a damaging moment. But it's still, you know, six and a half thousand dollars. Well, so. this is the thing. I mean, a lot of people don't get their car serviced because it's just too expensive. <laughs> and they'll let it go. Yeah. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Which is not a good thing to do. It's not a good thing at all. Yeah. yeah Especially yeah. if you bought that car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then there's um, the future. So mm. let's talk about what's coming next year. Mm. So starting with the XC40, the smallest SUV. Mm. Yep. Um, it's a really impressive car. Mm. Uh, there's going to be a entry level version added to that mix, uh, which is going to challenge the likes of the CX-5s of the world. It's wow, going to be around forty grand. Yeah. Um, with a three cylinder turbo engine. Yep. Um, 
which might put some people off. It's three-cylinder front-wheel drive, so goes against the all-wheel drive principles of the SUV world. But mm. that's, I mean... That's most people don't need all-wheel drive in most situations. So yep. yeah. um, that'll come in probably uh, early next year. Then there'll be an electric version of the XC40, which will be Volvo's first electric car electric. in Australia, yep. mm. which is pretty amazing. They've yep. got plug-in hybrids with the T8 versions of XC90 and XC60, uh, but this will be the uh, the new electric version of the XC40, which wow. is pretty impressive. Yes. Can't wait for that. And then there's also... That other brand, you know Polestar? I do. Mm. Now, what does Polestar mean to you? Uh, late night nightclub. <laughs> um, probably about 3 a.m. Great place to go. Yeah. yeah I remember a Top true. Gear magazine that had a, uh, a former writer um, as a po- posing as a as pole a dancer. Yeah. As Polestar. There you yeah. go. But it had nothing to oh, do with pole to dancing. Me, to me, it means the brand that uh, oversees all of Volvo's motorsport and mm. performance activities. Yep. And also the most subtly branded part of the brand as well. Mm. Years ago, they used to just have a tiny little blue tile on yep. the back of a pole. And the cars car. were invariably yep. blue. Yeah. And they were invariably blue, that, yep. that sort of turquoisey blue. Yep. yep. But blitz, blisteringly fast That's, and loud yeah. and hardcore. But kind of a yeah. Tiffany's Volvo. Well, it was a little exactly more blue right. than Tiffany's. Yeah, a little bit more blue. Aqua. I don't yeah. know who Tiffany is, but Tiffany is she the pole star? Uh, she's that singer from That's the 80s. Rude. Um, anyway... So we, we, we found out that Polestar is now an electric car or electrified car brand. Yes. It sort of sits a little bit separately to Volvo, but also with Volvo very much a part of how they do their business. Same company, though. It's a subsidiary, isn't it? It's a, subsidiary, it's isn't it? it's it's, a wholly yeah, owned subsidiary. Yeah. It's its own brand. Yeah. And mm. so they've got their own cars coming. So okay, yeah. there's the Polestar 1 Coupe, yeah. which is gorgeous, mm. but only left-hand drive. So is we it miss all electric? That. It, no, it's a plug-in hybrid. Okay. So they're an yep. electrified Electrified. Brand. So it's yes. a two-door sports car, yep. like low-slung. We're talking sort of oh, super-ish sort of look looking. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay, yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. But then uh, we don't get that because it's left-hand drive, oh. which is a shame. But yep. you don't get that. But we're going to get the Polestar 2, which, which is... As the, well as someone else. <laughs> it's it's a, a weird... Car. It is like a high-riding compact sedan with a lift back. I'm thinking cactus, Citroen cactus, like that. But think with a boot. It's got like a boot as well. It's like a sedan, but oh, a see lift that, back. We just had it. What that's a boot a, I is. saw the boot. Explain yeah, no, but that YouTube. actually that's, worked that's for That's the me. kind of information you'll get here. Yeah. Boot. That's a boot. Right, so it's a, a trunk sedan. It's a high-riding yeah. sedan. Essentially, but a compact one. Okay. It's a weird car. So you've seen images of this car? Yes, yeah. They've released uh, concept uh, images, and it's going to be coming to Australia late next year as part of the Polestar brand. Unreal. But it's going to be a performance car? Well, it's going to have in the region of 330 kilowatts and 600 newton meters. Holy. Wow. In a little car. Yeah. Yeah. And what about the whole palaver of how Polestar's marketed here? Little bits in the dealerships that says mm. Polestar, or they yeah. just sold through Volvo dealerships? Well, or, no, or nightclubs They're... through nightclubs. Yeah, well, it depends which nightclub <laughs> you're going to. You are going to close that deal easily <laughs> at three a.m. in the Polestar nightclub. Um, but it's the 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 aim is going to be that they'll have spaces, okay. so like a retail store, yes. yep. like Genesis has done with yes. with its. Do Sydney they store. work? We don't know yet, That's do the thing, we? Isn't it? Um, I don't think they work. I think they worked for HSV, for example, where a Holden dealership would have a section that was HSV. That seemed to work perfectly. Mm-hmm. Well. But aren't you talking about like in a shopping centre, like a? No. Well, the, it's oh, not decided yet. It's oh, not decided so how they're going to do it. You don't but go do supermarket shopping and then also come back with a car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you might go... It's an impulse oh, buy yeah, that's at the true. end of your grocery shop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, Mate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I have... We need milk, yeah. bread, yeah. And a Polestar. Yeah. I want a oh. high-riding four-door yeah. sedan and a, with a boot. And a, <laughs> and a giant Freddo. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, so they will have two spaces initially. That's the plan, Sydney yes. and Melbourne, mm. with Brisbane to follow. Okay. The, those spaces will be basically taken care of by Volvo dealers. Yep. But what will happen is people will go in and have a look and they, they can either place the order in the store mm. or they can place it online. Yep. And that's the, the future. of And it's fulfilled through the dealership of yeah. their choice. Yep. And yeah. so there won't be physical dealerships per se for okay. Polestar. That's the, the vision anyway. Can yeah, they so. test drive it though? That's a good question. I imagine yeah. they'll be able to test drive. It'll be a virtual so. test drive. I mean, do people want to test drive cars on. anymore or do you just go and buy them? I don't think yeah. they do. Do they? 
I don't. I don't. Think, I what mean, do you guys do? Do you just try yeah, to let us know. out there? Yeah. Or do you just go and buy it? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, there are people who will just buy a car online, like yeah. Tesla buyers. Uh-huh. Um, Subaru BRZ, you have to buy it online, but uh-huh. you might might be able to uh, test drive one in yeah. a dealership. Yes. So, I mean, I personally would want to drive a car before I laid down what's going to be probably a hundred thousand bucks or so. I think even more fundamental than that. I just want to go over it a bit and and have a look at it physically and and see if whatever imagery or video I've seen translates to reality. And this is where those little spaces come up. I mean, that's only, that's only helpful. Like if you live in Adelaide, you're going to have to fly to Sydney or Brisbane to get a a look in the car. Yeah. But Mm. eventually there'll probably be like a rollouts of, um, showcases that they'll take to different cities. What, like so a road can, show? Yeah. The exactly. Volvo parade's coming to town. The Polestar parade. The Polestar parade down the main street. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's the name? What's the uh, key designer at Polestar? Tiffany. Tiffany. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Yes. Oh, dear indeed. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah, fantastic. Now, have we got something to move on to? Ooh. Absolutely we do. Um Viewers and listeners may have noticed that this is an extended length episode for our 100th. And part of the reason for that is we need to get these details across to you. We have an amazing competition. And frankly, you're mad as a cut snake if you don't have a crack at it. Um, Tell us in 25 words or less why you should join us on one of the next comparison tests that we do. And if we like your answer most, that's exactly what will happen. We'll fly you economy, we're not stupid, from the (laughs) nearest capital city in Australia only to Sydney for the day so you can participate in a Cars Guide multi-car comparison test and see how we do it. It'll be brilliant fun. We'll get your input and you might even make a cameo video appearance. Runners up, as many as we see fit, (gasps) will get merch as much merch as you know, bucket hats. We've got okay. beanies. Beanies. Um, we've got the 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 very popular uh, flat baseball cap. Yes. Um, very. And very long good. like t-shirts. Singlet tops. We haven't seen this one in white before. It's fantastic. Cars got down the side. All that. So leggings. There's, there's plenty to fight for here. Yeah, the tights. <laughs> there's plenty to fight for here. Look, we'll monitor comments on four channels: YouTube. Facebook, iTunes, and comments at carsguide.com.au. Not MySpace. So that space. last one being the... No, 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 not, 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 not MySpace. The, uh, the email one. And we'll draw a line under submissions before the next podcast. So get to it. Yeah. You could join us on a comparison. How would fun. Come on. Absolutely be fantastic. Do so, they get to drive the cars with us? Look, uh, yeah, look. Anyway, moving on to <laughs> in, our, in our garage. Um, we are going to talk about the cars that have been living in our garage during yes. this week. First of all, Matt, mm. you have been in a Chinese vehicle mm-hmm. with a commercial twist. Yes, Fill us in. the LDV G10. Now, if you don't know what the LDV G10 is, it's a van. Yes. Ah. It's about the same size as a previous generation Toyota Hiace. Yes. Not the new one because the new one's heaps big. Yeah. Um, but it's also competing with the likes of the Hyundai iLoad yep. and uh, the Ford Transit Custom and the Renault Traffic. Yep. So it's... Because it's the one that is impossible to miss. You know, driving around in Sydney, mm. it just feels like there's been a generational shift mm. from Hiace that went to iLoad mm-hmm. with Hyundai and now Hyundai has had the rug pulled out from under it yep. by this one. Yeah, so the reason being is that for the diesel automatic rear-wheel drive van with a 1,000 kilos of payload, you're paying 30 grand drive away. Wow, mm. drive away. Drive away. $30,000. Yeah. So I imagine if in the Australian context you have an Australian business number, which means you're um, a commercial entity, yep. There may be even better no, deals to be that had. Is, that's the that's the ABN right. promotional price right now. Gotcha. Usually, it's thirty two and a half for ABN holders, yep. and about thirty four and a bit for non ABN holders. Wow. But it's worth investing in an ABN and just starting your own business yeah, to get yeah. a deal. There yeah. is easy to set up. Yeah, oh, I set one up. You yeah. have several uh, <laughs> shadow companies. I've got an AB to facilitate your various F business interests. Well. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. So the uh, the it's mobile the, nightclub, <laughs> the diesel Party bus. diesel automatic is the one that people will be most interested in because yep. there is also a petrol manual, a petrol auto, a diesel manual and a diesel auto. Okay. So the diesel auto is the top spec, but it's the one that most 
uh, couriers mm-hmm. or delivery drivers will probably be interested in because diesel is more efficient mm. and automatic is easier to drive. Oh, 100%. Yep. I, I, I can't imagine. It'd have to be a pretty specific application where you go, I really want a manual. Yes. Why would you yeah. get that? Uh, yeah. In Why? one of those vans because it's going to be used by <laughs> tradespeople, yeah. it's yep. going to be used by delivery yes. companies yep. where you're constantly in and out of the car. Mm. I would argue more in urban environments mm-hmm. than, than in mm. rural. Mm. Automatic, it'd have to be the it way have to. I mean, yep. what's the world come to? You can only get an automatic Supra. And you can get a manual van. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> Things gone upside down. Oh. Yeah. I want a super van. Topsy turvy. So, um, LDV, pretty good van, I have mm. to say. Yeah. Put some weight in it yesterday. It wasn't terrific with the weight, but we had mm. some issues loading it in because it has a tailgate rather than barn doors. So, a lifting back, a lifting door, back door rather than the. Yep. These ones, you yeah. can get barn doors uh, on the diesel versions, but not on the petrol versions. What? Yes. But it's funny because Toyota, with the new generation high ace, doesn't have barn doors on any model at all. Also, there's a shortage of barn doors because you've got to find the barn to know. get the <laughs> doors off in the first place. There's a lot of barns out there without doors. So the yeah. recy- I absolutely salute the recycling and reuse yeah, aspect of this, but you know, finding enough so, doors. And this is where all those barn find cars yeah. are coming <laughs> yeah, that's from because people are taking yeah, yeah. doors. Well, I love that. What's yeah. yeah, I love the distressed finish though, on, the, <laughs> on the wood. It's beautiful. Okay, so you got you finally got the load in. Got and the it load was, in. What did you say? 750 Seven hundred and fifty. Seven hundred and fifty yep. with the payload of a thousand ish. So it was, and it had a full tank of fuel, and it had me mm. on board. So we're pretty close to payload capacity, and it dealt fairly well with. Uh, that sort of load. Mm. Um, my biggest concerns were the braking performance was a bit soft and right. the rear suspension, because it's got coil springs for the uh, automatic versions of the LDV G10, the manuals have leaf springs, weirdly enough. Yeah. Um, and so it wow. had a bit of a soft and uh, wobbly ride over sharp edges and speed humps at lower speed. But most people aren't probably going to put 750 the kilos, kilos right at the back no, of the van. No, no, And if you're a, a delivery driver, you might put 400, 500 kilos of boxes in there and it would be a really suitable van. That's a mm. difficult conundrum. If you're a business operator and you really want the leaf spring because you are going to you know, chuck some heavy weight in there yep. and you've only got a manual yep. gearbox yeah. to choose from, that's, that's a bit tricky. But also, um, there's another concern, mm. and that's the safety, okay. uh, because it has a three-star rating, but it scored three stars in 2015. Oh, and oh, as, crikey. Yeah, yes. as we know, the ANCAP crash test ratings um, become the, the increasingly raised. stricter yes. and stricter over the years. a five-star car in 2015, not necessarily is a five-star car now. No, and more likely to be... Much three-star yeah, exactly. Yeah, more likely to be three, three stars, stars based Does on... Does it have AEB? No. Does it it have airbags? It has dual front airbags, but no side airbags. It has... Does it have any blind spot warning, lane keeping assistance? No. No. Nothing. Any forward alert, mitigation, anything like that? No. It has... Does it have a reversing camera? It's got a reversing camera. Okay, that's cool. Which is a good reversing camera. Okay. And it has sensors. And how does it perform in a crash test? Have you seen any footage of... Does it just turn into like... There were know, there were concerns. A one millimeter steel origami. <laughs> like like any <laughs> any sort of van mm. that's built like that, mm. uh, there are concerns about what happens to your legs when you crash into something very hard. Because it's got no bonnet, really. Well, it's got a yeah. It's, it's got a little. It's bit. got a semi bonnet. So. But it's, is it a cab over? No. No. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. It, I mean. All right. That's a concern. Yes. But, mm. yes. I mean, if you're just buying a van, if you're yeah. buying fleet like a fleet of yeah. vans and you just need a really good well, yeah. deal. But I must say, you, know, you think about a 70 Series Land Cruiser yes. and the reason it continued and so much effort was yep. put into making the uh, single cab version yep. five-star and cab mm-hmm. because fleets are increasingly demanding right. five-star safety yep. in the vehicles that they buy. And today, that that wouldn't happen it for that car. It would not That's happen, right. no so, way. Well, I think know? the solution is just don't crash it. <laughs> like, that's a great, great idea. I don't know why we don't strike on that one more often. Mm. Uh, pardon the pun. Who Up needs here. safety ratings? Just don't crash. Yeah. All right. So some some definite advantages in terms of price and yep. and the its ability outright to carry stuff yeah. with some concerns, but yeah, the safety. You've just got uh, to consider your purchase. I think that's a, okay. a good rule of thumb with any. Purchase Great. really very so, good. Yeah, in whatever you buy. Yeah, whether it's two o'clock in the morning online, just consider the pers- purchase first. Or yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yes, you can buy some strange things um, at that time. Wish. Now, 
which is a, a totally different, not totally different, it's got four wheels it and, and a steering wheel, but a markedly different vehicle um, has been occupying your time. That's this week. right. In, in, in the garage downstairs, we had a Range Rover Velar. Now, it was the D300 HSE, the R Dynamic version of it. Um, $126,554 is its list price. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot of car. So it's, does P, that means it's the biggest diesel engine or the most right. powerful it's diesel engine? That's right. It's a three-litre V6 turbo diesel. So it's the top spec on the diesel side of things. Yeah, Would that be right? Yeah, and HSC is the top, top spec, yep. spec as well. Yeah. And R Dynamic, what's that? R Dynamic <laughs> means sporty. So uh, you get sporty bits in terms of the front and oh. rear bumpers. So like it's, it's like the AMG line or yeah. the R so line. The R stands for R really. Line. Doesn't it's just really dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Dynamic. It doesn't actually provide you any more performance, right. yeah. uh, but it does make it look sportier. How many um, times in the office have we mm. said that Range Rover and Land Rover and Jaguar, their model lines are just so confusing? Very. But that's changing, as I understand. They are. Yeah. That, that there's a rationalisation of all of that. They're pairing them back, but they're still right, they're, 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 even so. Even so, they're still doing R dynamic as a different variant of each. Well, right? they're making. Well, what they're doing at the recent Jaguar XE launch, R dynamic is now just standard. Okay. On 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 both grades. Yeah. Um, and there's only two grades. So uh, the CEO of 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 Jaguar Land Rover Australia said they're going to be rationalising. Uh, the lineup. Mm-hmm. His, his quote was, "We admit in the past there's been too much choice, right? Um, and I think that's code for it's just too confusing. Yeah. Um, and and like, God, even from their end, it must be difficult oh, to try and keep up. Trying with. to order cars to stock or yeah. or how how you're ordering and and think process of the, must, yeah, must be awful. Think Deal of the parts right. inventory. Parts inventory. Yeah. You need oh, service training. Costs. Or it all gets well. That's it. Well out of hand. Jaguar Land Rover use the a just in time uh, production process yeah. where. They are rolling down the production line as people are buying them. In fact, Mm. I think they try and fine-tune it such that they've got a car that they've Mm. ordered and they're trying to find a customer to put on it so they can fine-tune what the spec's going to be. They've got a a production slot, but they've got to fine-tune what it actually is. So there's a D300 HSC rolling down the line and you've got a guy, a salesman in Australia going, what about the D300 HSC? Would you like that? I think you'd like that. (laughs) You love green, don't you? Yes, <laughs> in green. <laughs> Look, it's it's a beautifully finished car. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, it's 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 been superb to drive. Um, it's you know it's, I think it's probably the most beautiful Range Rover to have appeared in years. So uh, I, you don't I, agree, do you? On the polar opposite. What do you mean? On the Velar? Well, because we're back really? on the pole star. This is this is back to yeah. the blob argument, because it just great there's, film. There's nothing. Great film. <laughs> the blob argument. The yeah. blob. Who starred in that? Oh, I have no idea. The blob did. Oh, the blob. It was terrifying. I thought yes. you meant the blob. I think it was argument. 1960s. It was. It was the, the spin-off. It was this thing. It was basically like mm. jelly that yes. was eating people. Yeah. <laughs> and it would just r- It just rolled into over town yeah. and came out of the grates and yeah. oh, up through the gutter and just oh, took people out. The yeah. blob. So, and that's what out. the Range Rover Velar is doing to no. people. <laughs> no. Um, it's beautiful. <laughs> no. It, uh, my, my concern, my, my issue with the design is that it just looks too... Streamlined. It just oh, it okay. doesn't doesn't look SUV ish enough. And I think okay. I oh, maybe okay. that's your blob thinking. So the, right. there's nothing to it. I saw at um, okay. Paris Motor Show last year. There are companies that are doing like flared guard kits for the Velar to make it look a bit more robust, a little okay. bit more like a Range Rover. And flared pants kits as well. Well, if you <laughs> pay enough, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're amazing. Yeah. I just think, like going back to what Gordon Wagner, Gordon Wagner said, I think that no lines thing has become the you know the two thousands and twenty. So it's rigor. reached, it's reached yeah. a, a tipping point for you. Yeah, in this car not yeah. enough, you don't not like enough it. character. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. That's for me though. Okay, haven't Somewhere. you felt that Range Rovers in the past have just looked so samey, and that this finally has broken that boxy but mold? That's the thing; they've looked samey, but they've been gorgeous. So, but I th- well, for what it's worth, I think you're a nut job. I'm with Richard. <laughs> Thank I you. think it's Thank absolutely you, beautiful. Tell us yeah. what you think in the comment yeah. section mm. below. Am I <laughs> so, right or are they? Or is he a nut job? Yeah, let's <laughs> That's let's fine. get that decided. Yeah, um, definitely or, a nut job. All right, so um, yeah. continue. You've oh, look. Um, it's not the first time I've driven a Velar. I road tested one when it first came out a couple of years ago. Um, there's there's there are there there are some things about that car that I absolutely adore. I love the dual screens. Yes, um, and then yeah. at the same time, there is. Well, you're <laughs> looking at Matt Oy! again. I love. I love Strike the fact two. that you've got these top deck 
screeds. Yep. At the same time, things I don't really like is that it can be a bit busy and you don't right. you can get lost. Yeah. And what and with the controls, so it's got two dials down here and they're hang on. Uh, they're mul- <laughs> they're multifunctional. So yes. your your drive mode one can become your climate. Control yeah. depending on what button you press on the screen. I see. So at first, I was changing into snow, mud, and gravel, just to trying to turn left. the temperature down. Yeah, <laughs> you're on <laughs> different radio station, yes. and you're going up walls vertically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the problem wow. with having a screen that's yeah. down below your line of yeah. sight. That's yeah. a control screen. Because you reach because down. You've got to take your eyes off the road. Can you talk to it? <laughs> you know, voice <laughs> control maybe. Uh, I look. I I didn't I don't try. Think have, I don't no, think it's no. that advanced. Okay. I don't think they have the same level of smarts as a Mercedes or, yeah, right. or BMW do. Yeah, in that right. regard. yeah. So you can't say turn the temperature down. Yeah. Hey, Land Rover. Yeah. You know what I, mean? yes. I don't think yes. it's there yet. But yeah, it's. I think that multifunctional dials uh, threw me a little bit, mm-hmm. and it's not the first time it's thrown me. And um, what about the diesel engine? These Ingenium diesels. They've been a pretty good thing so far. Did you find it? Quiet, refined, loud, terrible. How, how about that? Extremely quiet. Yeah. Okay. Um, look, I've, di- I've just got out of a, a diesel Tucson, and um, that was loud. Right. Yeah. Uh, like commercial vehicle loud. Uh, I tell you what, the, those four, those Ingenium engines are, are superbly yeah. smooth and yeah. quiet. Yeah. Um, Do you disagree, Matt? No. No. Okay. Talky, <laughs> responsive. We have um, detente. Yeah. And they really, really, I think. <laughs> I think diesel as a as a fuel really suits Land Rover as well. Okay. I mean, obviously for its heritage, but I think um, you pull up and there's a Range Rover beside you, and it's going. Yeah, it yeah, kind of yeah. suits that toughness yeah. about okay. it. So okay. yeah, and a V6 too, so mm. very good. Mm. Now I'll just chip in. Um, I actually Matt bringing his Jimny out of the garage uh, <laughs> got me thinking. My my car, a, a special car that I own, has been for various reasons that are too bit boring to detail kind of off the road for some time, but it's back and better than ever. For me, it's like a member of the family. You've been slightly down because someone's ill and you can't <laughs> quite live a normal life. But but now it's back. It's a, it's 50th birthday this year. So Woo! fitting to have yeah. on a centenary episode, cake. another celebration cake. cake. Um, it's a 1969 280SE Merc Coupe. So it's a six cylinder, two door, four seat. Well, actually it'll seat five. It's got belts for five. And I absolutely love it. There's a big part of me that's invested in that car. So for mm. people watching on YouTube, we'll have some pickies of it up behind. It's gorgeous. But it's just so nice to be able to drive it again. I, I feel like it's a time machine. You get in there yeah. and you actually go back 50 years and experience what it was like to be cruising around. It's not fast. Yep. Um, it's not particularly dynamic, but it certainly has presence. And I just love being the custodian of it until I check out and then you know, <laughs> yeah. one of my kids will have it and it'll, it'll keep going. So that's, um, there's that, that. That's how it is. I mean, um, for all of us, you know, from Mal, myself, you, JC, Matt, all of us have got our own cars that aren't press cars, mm. no. aren't loan cars. No. And um, they are like members of the family. Yeah. I've got a 1951 Ford. Yeah. You've got a, your gym. You've have, you have a different car every year. Yeah. You about. You're a bit more promiscuous. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, might, I might have to buy something really old to join the really old cars club. <laughs> well, you've got a, what, a 1990s Jimny. What year is it? It's 2007, mate. 2007. It just right. looks like 1990. <laughs> you are still wet behind the ears. <laughs> oh, well, it's got new tyres. Yeah. The tyres yeah. are brand yeah. new. Oh, yeah. So good. All right. Mm. Well, look, speaking of brand new, this is a big, big moment for Tools in the Shed. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Me too. I've, yeah. I've been nervous. Uh, luckily, I have Shaking. tights on, which is uh, keeping things <laughs> keeping everything under in. control. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is time for the best ever musk watch. All right. Okay. Uh, it is the most special musk watch we've ever had. And they've all been special in their own way. Hmm. Um, Elon, welcome to Tools in the Shed. So amazing to have you on the show. Uh, Thank you so much for your time. As you know, we're huge fans and we just want to fire a few um, questions at you. Boring bonehead questions are not cool. Boring Uh, bonehead questions. Boring bonehead questions. Okay. Not cool. We'll take that on board. Thank Um, you. That's understood. Um, (laughs) Look, so we've seen electric vehicles from BMW and Jaguar, Mini, and this week Porsche's Taycan, Merck stepping up with EQ, and Audi with e-tron. What do you make of the uh, the fresh competition, you know, for your Tesla products? Tron, but it's, it's... Have you got other people with you there, Elon? There's, There's room for improvement. Is that Etron? Etron. Yeah. He's got Etron. 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 
Oh. Huh. Who, are, who are all those people? He's big French, that's... He's never alone. That's, that's really he's got, funny. like, his little own laugh. He speak French. Oh, Etron. Etron. Oh, Etron. Etron. So we'll leave it to people to Google that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's unfortunate. Oh. It is unfortunate. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks for that, Elon. Thank you, Elon. Yeah. Um, look, I don't want to um, trouble you for two more, but just a few more questions. Of all the things you've done so far, you know, through PayPal and SpaceX, the Boring Company, and Tesla, what are you, um, what are you most proud of? The, the fart app, of course. That's uh, one of my favorites. Oh, the fart app. Like, yeah. The fart app. I love the fart app. In the Model 3, you, guys, you, know, you, can, you can decide where the fart comes from. In it the sounds seat. like you have other people with you. That That's fine. Yeah. It would have been nice to know ahead of yeah. schedule. We thought we anyway. had solitary time, but that's okay. <laughs> um, um, Elon, yeah. we, we have a great relationship, so I know you'll take this in the right spirit. Yeah. You have a uh, healthy ego, right? It's really giant, um, and it's getting bigger. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's an honest answer. Answer. I know yeah, you can is. be you can be frank it's with us. It's enormous, but people yeah. tend to hold that against you. That's that's hardly fair. Uh, it, it's it's true. True, what you say. Um, it's 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 very distressing. It makes me sad. Um, oh. but I'm not sure what. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do about it. Oh, okay. That's, that's, just, yeah, that's pretty tough. Just lay off yeah. Twitter, maybe. That's pretty tough. That, oh, yeah. that could help. That could help. Look, you're, a, you're a big um, ideas guy, but mm. it feels like some just want to shoot you down. It's the most crazy disinformation campaign I've, I've ever yes. seen. Yes. Yeah. Oh. People are agreeing There's with like you a in, yes the man in the background. <laughs> There's there really lots is, of yeah. yes men around you, yeah. mate. Yeah, there aren't there, Elon? Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, Elon. Um, look. Your newest project is a Winnebago style uh, mobile home, the Model G. We oh, all know that. Oh, can't wait! Um, mm. Can you give us any uh, early details on that one? Something that'll, if you're driving it down a road, it looks like it came out of a sci-fi movie. Oh, wow! wow. That's fantastic. That sounds brilliant. Mm. Um, you're also working on a feature-length documentary. Um, you've given us the whisper about that, about the life and death of Harambe, the gorilla oh. that um, oh. met such an unfortunate end in the Cincinnati Zoo a few years ago. Mm. We know that's a project that's close to your heart. Um, what's the latest on that one? Close to being magical. Um, oh. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, get, I feel good about this. This. Uh, Going to wide release fairly soon. How, oh, wow. wow! I want to know great how news. soon. That's great but news. Can you tell us going to be um, a movie anymore. about the monkey? Look, so look, Elon. Oh, we've got to move on. Elon's time. Oh, sorry. Is sorry. So so precious. Yeah. Um, so Elon, look, fess up. When are you scheduled to leave for Mars? <laughs> That's, I, I thought that question may be asked. Um, oh, yeah. Bit so, of a delay. Um, yeah. We. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I hope, I hope soon. Uh, so do we. It, that's, that, I mean, that's that's fantastic. We that's can't wait to soon. soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon. Yeah. Uh, look, and if that doesn't come off in the near term, how will you get away from all this earthly pollution and uh, and madness? Yeah. So, but we actually do do have a design for a submarine car. Submarine wow. car. Submarine car. Submarine. So presumably no. you're going for some kind of undersea world. That's Amazing. extremely good. Or is he still there? No, Elon. He's gone. Oh. He's gone. Hello. That's amazing. We just got several minutes That's with a dear leader. I feel like I feel a bit humiliated. I feel like he was taking the piss out of us. Like he was in an auditorium and they were like laughing at oh, us. Never know. Look, I've or got to just house. give people some important information about that interview. Listening to this interview may cause stomach discomfort and or laxative effect. It does not contain nuts or any genuine Elon Musk content. Well, it does contain a nut. This is a work of satire yeah. not based on facts and is only valid for participating listeners, which in this case means all listeners. <laughs> One interview per customer, not a Narnia gateway, and remember to dial before you dig. Narnia gateway. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a Narnia wasn't, gateway. Now, look, despite all of that, mm. the share price, it's gone up again. Tesla wow. share price two forty seven two hundred forty seven dollars. It was two hundred and twenty nine last week. That's just because he came on the show, right? That's maybe just now. Wow! Um, look, uh, amazing. Yahoo Finance, in fact, says the stock could still be undervalued yeah. by forty five percent. Holy what? So Mold. a JMP analyst uh, by a guy by the name of Joseph Osher believes Tesla's leading competitive position in the electric vehicle market supports his positive stance on the stock. So he's very positive about it. 
He calls competitors, specifically Audis, mm. product launches weak, oh. which makes him even more confident that Tesla can hold on to its leading position. So the Etron. Etron. The Etron. I think that's very prescient of, of Elon wow. to be uh, focusing on the Audi in that way. I wonder. I do wonder, though, with, with uh, Elon's uh, mm. constant barrage of brain farts on Twitter, yeah. um, what... What effect is that really having on this uh, the share price in particular? I think like, that's interesting. I mean, he has calmed down his act on Twitter. Yeah. He, has, he has really eased off on the direct Tesla statements in terms of production and when this model will arrive. None of that. Mm. But He's very much about other stuff. In, yeah. the, last, in the last couple of days with this whole, we're going to take the Taycan down, oh, down on the Nürburgring, the Nürburgring. Yeah. and you know all these images that are coming out of this P100 Plus yeah. and... All this information about the plaid mode, yeah. which is the new mode that's going to sit above Ludicrous. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And it's going to have a tri motor setup and all this crazy. That is bending the rules of what he's allowed to say and what he's not allowed to say. Mr. Pritchard, can we get him back on the line? Is yeah. there any chance? Hang on. Uh, any ch- get him back. No. No, no, no got him. No. 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 Oh, okay, it's a shame. well, that would be something well worth putting to him. Yeah. Who made you the boss, Matt? Oh, look, I'm just looking at what he's legally allowed to do. Anyway, what do you mean? <laughs> this person reckons, do this, whatever you uh, like, Elon. Mr. Mr. Osher reckons that the stock could outperform over the long term, and he's got a $337 price target on it. So that's in the in the mm. medium term. Right. Which implies about 45% upside. It's been there it before, right though. It's oh, been, no, it has. It's been up there. It mm. has. It has. So, I mean, if you want your share price to go up, you should come on the show too. <laughs> Good interview. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Now, with that, we have reached the longer than usual finish line. Um, thank you, Matt. Thank you. And thank you, Richard. Thank you. Um, we've got some more streamers. Yep. Yeah, yep. Oh. Ah. Hey. Um, and wow, many, many thanks to Mr. Well. Pritchard for his hey. epic production skills. Ah, oh, that's Mr. Uh, Pritchard. Brought streamer. to bear once again for this glorious go. century. Oh. He's in the puffy sleeve linen shirt and jodhpurs today, um, teamed with an amazing deer stalker and faux emu skin shoes. Oh, uh, they're cool. moccasins, I think. It's absolute perfection. Please pass on the word about the podcast Thank and you. let us know your thoughts by searching for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast. Or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. And remember, you can watch us on YouTube. In mm. fact, give the competition a go on YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, and comments Not at carsguide.com.au. Not the competition. Not, Not our, our competition. Side. Don't our listen competition. to them. Oh. Don't listen to the competition. No, no, no. Don't give, give com- them a go. Give our competition yep. where you can join us for yep. a comparison test on yep. those four channels. 25 words or less. Until yeah. next week, a neighbor knocked on the door last night. Mm. Um, he's a bit of a wild man, runs a 60s Mustang convertible, and oh. knows I work for Cars Guide, so like I kind of knew it would be a car yeah, thing. So he's, um, yeah. Sure enough, he said, I've got water in the carburetor, man, which is strange because he's not mechanically inclined at all. Mm. So I said, how do you know that? We better take a look. Where's the car now? To which he said, in the pool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a wild man. He's a wild man. I like him. Woo-hoo, Me too. 100. Woohoo! <laughs> Hunt the ton.